Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about doing text recognition with Microsoft's Cognitive Services. And there's a, a newer service that does this. Text recognition takes a, a picture of text, looks at a picture of text and turns that into text itself. And the new service is called the Text Recognition Service. It differs a little bit from the older OCR service, Optical Character Recognition Service. It's slightly more complicated to use, but the results tend to be better. Uh, so the way we're going to do this is if I go to Microsoft.com slash cognitive, like this. This brings me to my cognitive services site. And down in vision, under computer vision, we'll look directly at the API. There's also some other information here, but I'm mostly interested in the API right there. And here, there's a lot of things in the computer vision API, a lot of things that uh, you can do with it. But I'm mostly interested in this, the recognized text. And, and to do recognized text, you, you have to actually make two web service calls. One of them, the first one right here, it's a post to a URL that looks kind of like this, is a, um, uh, you're gonna send the image, either a URL pointing to the image online somewhere or the actual binary image itself and it'll return uh, an, another UR. All that does is just kick off the job so you can do large text recognition with this. Uh, the other URL looks kind of like this. The one you get back from here looks like this. It's the get recognize text operation result and that one we're gonna send a get request to an endpoint that looks sort of like that. There's some placeholders in there. The operation ID is key. That's what comes back from the first web service call. And that will return two pieces of information, or potentially two pieces of information. One will be the status of the job. Is it complete or is it uh, in process or did error? And then if it's completed, it'll also return the text itself. So the second one is where we actually get the text uh, that's in the image. So let's see how that works. First thing we need to do, to do is to go to the Azure portal and create a new cognitive service. So we're coming here, search for cognitive services right there. Say create, I'll give it a name, I'll call it DG test cog. That's fine. Uh, I'll put it in. Um, how about in East US? That's fine. Uh, pricing tier, I'll take the cheap one. Resource group, I've got a resource group called DG Test CSRG. I'll put it in there. Check that checkbox which says that I totally read whatever it says is that it says down there. And then in, oh, I don't know, be 30 seconds or so. It's going to create this new service for me. And it'll give me two important pieces of information. One will be the uh, the URL, or the, at least the base part of the URL for all cognitive services, and the other will be the key, the the which is something that I have to pass to every web service call I make, and that key it's a unique one here. You want to keep this safe. I'll show it to you guys, of course, because I totally trust you. So this is created now, and here's my keys. I'm going to go right there and grab this key, just copy it. Let me open up Notepad real quick, just so I have a place to save it. Right there, that's one important piece of information. The other important piece is, if I go up to Overview, then this endpoint right here is important as well. So I'm going to hang on to that also. And now I can go back to here and let's look at this API. The first one, the recognized text, it says that I want to pass it to an endpoint that has something slash vision slash v2 slash recognize test question mark mode. Well, what is mode? Mode is, it'll say question mark mode equals, and it could either be the word printed or the word handwritten. Um, so I want to say printed, I'm going to say mode equals printed. I'll use this one right here. I found some text online, just a, a poem somewhere. Um, and then uh, in the headers, I want to specify the content type. Content type is how am I going to pass it? I'm going to pass it as a binary file, or I'm going to pass it as just a, some text that's, that points to a URL out online that is, is the picture. And then also in the header, I want to pass in the OCP API M subscription key. Well, that's just this right here, this thing that I trust you guys with, but no one else. So I want to do that. And I can test this right here in the browser. I, I created this service in the East US. So right here, there's my endpoint. My mode is going to be printed. 
uh, content type will be application JSON. That's fine. My key is that right there. And I have to specify that URL. So let me grab it here, right there. And it has to be a posted. Uh, this will post to that. You can see right here what it does. And I'll click on send. And I got back a 202. That's good. Anything that starts with 200 means everything was successful. And I also got back this location right here. So let me grab that right here. And that's important too, especially this operation right here, this operation ID that uniquely identifies what, uh, which job it's doing. Uh, so the job is kicked off and I can query it based on this operation ID here, actually just sending a get to that URL. It's all described right here, get recognize text operation results. And you can see it's endpoint version, blah, 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 all the op text operation slash operation ID, which is what I have right back right there. All right. Uh, and then I need to, um, uh, in the header, I, all, I still need to pass in this subscription key as well. And I can test it right here in the browser. Let me do this. I'll click on East US. That's where it is. Uh, let me grab the operation ID. It's this one right here. And the key is that right there. And here we go. There's a, it's going to do a get to this URL right here. Pass some stuff in the header. Click on send. Got back a 200. OK. And then status, this is important here. This is a small one, so it, it succeeded. Everything was good. And because it succeeded, it also returned all this information. You notice that there is an array of lines, and each line has a bounding box, which is just x, y coordinates of the four corners. There are eight numbers in here. And so if you want to draw a line, a box around that line, maybe to highlight it or block it out or whatever you want to do or replace it with something else, you could do so. There's the text itself of that line, A Nation's birthday. Let's go look at the thing right here, A Nation. So, so far it's doing pretty well. And then within each, within each line, there is an array of words. And each word has a bounding box. So you could do something special with that one word, replace it or remove it or oh, highlight it, whatever. And then here are the words, A Nation's birthday, etc. And there's the next word, or the next line, rather. By Mrs. J C J or J C Yule, and there's by Mrs. and so on. And so all the information is in here. They can look at it. If there had been some kind of error, that information would be there. The status would be an error. But that's the information that we get back. If I wanted to do the same thing in a tool like Postman, I could do that as well. But I think I'll save that for the next video. This is David. Thank you for watching. <laughs>